So I figured I'd take a little break from the uh, sky rebuild I got going here. And uh, ordered this RF. Um, so I'm kind of curious how a 35 size control line is going to fly with an electric motor. So, I'm not that well versed with electrics. They, it's kind of sketchy what they're calling for a motor. Uh, they're just saying 600 size, 18 fit BH part number here. So, I called up the hobby shop, and in the end, it turns out I have a suitable motor for this thing. It's uh, going to have to do. So, it's a yellow one. So I'm going to step aside from my flight streak build and assemble this uh, electric control line from Brodak. It'll be kind of interesting. So, kind of wondering how they mounted the uh, motors. Basically, you just put a big old wooden disc on the front. Put a couple of wedges there. Hold the bugger on. And that's it. You bolt your motor in there and your, your uh, speed control and timer go in here, I suppose. And then, uh, interestingly enough, they get a hole in the leading edge of the wing. Which I'll show you later. Where your battery goes. So, this, uh, I'm prove to be kind of neat. Here's the motor I'm going to put in it. It's a Ramtech 3536, C3536, and it's a 1450 kilovolt motor. It's uh, a little more RPM than they're calling for, but uh, so I had it kicking around. I bought it years ago from uh, a place in Edmonton. A hobby wholesale and, and uh, it, it's a 25 equivalent they say so uh, I'm assuming that's a 25 ball bearing motor like or engine like an uh, OS so which would be the OS LA actually has more power than the uh, Fox 35 so I'm gonna assume with a 9 Four or nine five prop that the motor is going to work fine and uh, this this uh, fuselage is kind of neat it's it's uh, got lightning holes in the aft part of it which makes sense and I noticed I got a piece of hardwood or something in here for the uh, push rod guide which I do all the time when I build um, so I'm going to have to get some of these wrinkles out of it. But yeah, they get the, lots of lightning holes. And it's not going to be a problem because it's not going to be a big old Fox 35 hammering away and, and, and uh, causing you grief. With uh, She's got a bow in her too. Good lord, she ever got a bow in her. So I'm going to see if I can get that fuse straightened out a bit when I shrink this. Um, yeah, she's got quite a warp, huh? You can see that. At first I thought it was just because of the way this shape was an illusion, but it, that's, that's no illusion. That's as crooked as a politician. But, it's, uh, it's warped in the right direction anyway. <laughs> it's going that way, which is, which is uh, the direction of your offset. So we'll see if I can get some of that. I doubt if I can. That's like half inch balsa. But I'll see if I can get some of that out when I uh, shrink up the covering. Okay, here's the hardware package. Strangely enough, CA hinges on the stab and the elevator. And I got these. Uh, End hinges in the hardware package, which is kind of different. 
I don't see any heads on the pins, so they could probably come up pretty damn easy. This is not good. And there's the uh, typical old and very well soldered together uh, uh, flap horns. Landing gear, tail wheel gear. It looks like a tail skid actually. And your horn and all that other wheels. High quality uh, earth wheels, Chinese wheels. Um, this would probably be used, I think that's used to, it's like a roll pin, looks like it's brass, for joining your push rod. And you can adjust on the soldering iron if you have to. Yeah. So there's the hardware package. Nothing to brag about. Now they get this hokey nose cowling, they call it. So they want you to cut the trim off, or the covering off, trace it out and cut it off. And I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, why does it have this? Um, might effectively allow your engine to get warm, or motor to get warm. And it's, it's fiberglass. The, the, they say it's uh, plastic in the direction, so it's actually fiberglass. So I'm thinking, we're not going to do that. I'll just leave it like this and put a little spinner on it and she'll look just fine without that strange looking turd on the front there. Because I don't see any structural reason for putting it there. <sighs> Here are rubber bands and Velcro and uh, I would say uh, up, um, I think it's a revision for the newer style uh, timers and stuff. That was in that bag. I think I'm going to do two videos on this. The instructions. You know what? I put together a lot of airplanes and ARFs and belt kits and stuff. I still follow the instructions. I still, and I always read them first and then and, uh, keeps the fellow out of trouble. And here's the uh, wing and the flaps. All this is already hooked up. It says it has adjustable lead outs. That's my first dent, and uh, it does not have adjustable lead outs. They're fixed. So, if you get one of these, the lead outs are not adjustable. It wouldn't be hard to put them in there, but I'm not going to bother. Um, this is where your battery goes in there. And it's open in the back. And tapered that, I'm assuming, probably for cooling the battery. It's just got a plywood piece glued in the back to stop your battery from going in. We will see a 2600 or 33,000 milliamp battery is going to fit in there. Well, so that's the wing and flaps. I mean, you see the notches in the flaps there for the for those uh, hinges these are these are pretty damn loose um, I was kind of wondering I, I, I don't like CA hinges I've used them I've never had much trouble with them I just don't like how they flop and wobble around so I got a feeling this is going to happen We'll get rid of the Chinese pin hinges. I'll get rid of those CA hinges for an extra hour's work. And I'll just take my uh, hinge slot tool open because I got the the uh, Dubro style cutters in it, the thicker ones. We'll epoxy these bad boys in there. And you'll have nice, nice free moving uh, control surfaces. Like I said, these are they're definitely a step up. I'm going to take them out of there and have a look. Ah. <laughs> yeah.
Hmm. If I didn't like somebody, I think I'd put the, these on their airplane. Um. <laughs> yeah. There. Problem solved. Well, I'm not going to use any of the hinges that come with this. Uh, I'm looking at these wheels. They're wide. They're foam. Um. I'm thinking something more like this. Put a little bit of quality in there. These are uh, lighter, they're a bit softer. They will suck up the balance on my landings. Um, and they're they're narrower. They're considerably narrower than the, these. Just they just look cheap because they are cheap. Uh, I'm just kind of pissing around with this because I'm uh, more curious about to how well this will work. I have a PT-19, E-Flight PT-19 that's been discontinued. It was like a convertible. I have a video on this channel about assembling that. And uh, it flies really well. It, it flies so nice they had to stop making it. And everything was crystal clear. It tells you what size motor and what prop worked good. And the information they gave me for that PT-19 worked beautifully. Brodak instructions with this airplane or uh, if you're if you're really into electrics and know a lot about them you're gonna it's not a big deal but they're kind of they're kind of foggy for me anyway because uh, I know what to put in models because they just come out and tell you here's here's what size motor you need this one is uh, pretty much trying to say here's the Brodak motor you need buy it and it's not giving you a lot of information on it so basically I'm putting a 25 size uh, electric motor in her. Uh, I'm going to put Dubro hinges on her all around. <laughs> and I a little bend in the fuselage. So I'm going to try my best to get it out. Um, there is offset in this rudder. Um, I don't put uh, offset in my rudders anymore but I'll leave it in this one. I'm not going to start cutting that apart. And. Uh, Show you the stickies too. Um, it's not bad, you know. It's, kit's less than a hundred dollars, so you know I can't uh, I can't knock it too bad.